Hey, how's it going, people of the internet? My name is Crash, and Final Stand is finally here. Well, not quite. Dice actually decided to open up the community test environment to test some of the Final Stand maps. We'll be seeing them kind of roll out gradually over the next few days, and we'll be able to test them early. But today, I thought it would be a good time to pretty much wrap up everything we know so far about the DLC to get you guys caught up because a lot of information has dropped in the last few days. Well, let's start with the basics. You're probably wondering what map is this. This is Operation Whiteout. It takes place in a research facility in the Arctic and I must say on a scale of the 1 through 10, this is meh. Mediocre effort halting all love for Final Stand. A lot of those letters are silent. This map is like the Lapini Garden of Final Stand. It's not a bad map, but it's really not that exciting, I should say. Most of your excitement comes from, hey, I'm playing Final Stand early. But when you actually like get down to it, there's a few new battle pickups, the MKV and a railgun that one shots infantry and helicopters and kind of does a significant blow to armor. Also, if you go around looking for armor to shoot, you're probably going to run into a hovering tank. And that tank is off the ground. It's dank. I really like the hovering tank, even though it's probably like a groundworking for Battlefront 3 as like a prototype. But I feel like this DLC fits a lot like China Rising. They even brought back the bomber from China Rising. I'm not sure if that's going to be just in this particular map or is it going to reign its domain over the other Final Stand maps. But Operation Cocaine Everywhere pretty much feels like a rehash of Silk Road. And I'm kind of sorry to say that, but that's what it really feels like. The snowmobiles. I just can't wait to like the community as a, itself kind of gets a hold of this DLC because I can already see the C4 snowmobiles. I'm not against it, I, I will say that. And I'm wondering, will it be that same deal where everyone kinds of plays it for like a month and they forget about it? Because that's what happened with China Rising. I'm not saying that the maps were particularly bad in China Rising. It was just really the state of the game. And I'm pretty sure people were just excited to move on to the second assault maps at the time. So tell me guys, do you enjoy Operation Whiteout as it is? Because I personally, I think to judge it as a whole, I will have to see it played on more game modes. I know right now it's pretty much Conquest Large. I'm not the biggest fan of Conquest Large and maybe it could be rubbing off. So tell me guys, what do you think of Operation Whiteout? Anyway guys, we're gonna actually get into everything we know about Final Stand. So we know a few interesting things are coming in the coming days, such as a knife with a bipod as a reference to Battlefield Friends, a very popular YouTube show. There's also going to be a knife completely made out of ice. I'm not sure if you guys think that is cool. I'm just kind of confused at the least. And lastly, and most exciting, there's going to be a bow that's a part of the Phantom program. Now for some time now there has been rumors about a weapon coming into the Phantom assignment instead of camouflages. Now I do believe this is a nice option and I hope it's not too hard to unlock because it really reminds me of Crisis. So there's also a few other things you guys should know in Final Stand's push for futuristic warfare, they introduced two controversial gadgets and attachments that I think a lot of people aren't really talking about. First, they introduced this new decoy gadget that pretty much when you place it, it marks up like someone was spotted there. But I have tested it, the thing doesn't move, it's like it's a sniper up there. And I can see the Claymore Trolls already. I, I think it's going to be hilarious, but I believe it's just for a decoy, just like it says. But I can't wait to see this like gadget actually used in close quarters warfare, where people are going to be trying to rush a certain spot and they're going to get tricked. So I believe it's going to change the game a lot. Also, they're introducing a new attachment, which I thought was quite strange. 
it's auto spotter, so you no longer have to spam Q like I do. I'm pretty much an auto spotter myself. I just press Q all the time I'm playing. So yeah, but if it gets people, mostly newbies, to spot people on the mini map with ease, I feel like it's kind of needed, but not really needed. And it's an attachment. You do lose something for it. Not really the most overpowered thing, but I could see someone who is more new to the game, don't know much about spotting, using the attachment a bit more. Now, I kind of wonder about the spotting time. Is it going to be kind of instant updates where it's spotting all the time, or will it be a cooldown between spots? That's really all I'm really concerned about, and that's really where this video ends. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you think Shrek is life, make sure you do leave a rating. I'll see you guys later. Stay creative, guys. I will be covering Final Stand as much as I can. Can't really promise you daily videos, but I will try my best. I'll see you guys later. Like I said, stay creative. It feels so weird. Just end the video.